Even the president of Ireland doesn't want you to own anything anymore. This line is playing a little bit too much on me now. Perhaps I'm reading too much into it or perhaps I'm not giving it enough attention. You're gonna own nothing and be happy about it. It seems like Irish politicians and even Irish media are helping that statement become more and more a reality. Maybe they don't even realize what they're doing. There is at this stage, quite obviously, a narrative that's been pumped out by the media that owning property is a bad thing. And the solution to the housing crisis is state housing. And that narrative is getting pushed out more and more. Even the ideology around property not being a commodity is getting louder and louder. And what does that really mean? Or what does that really look like? I have a natural state to kind of question everything that I read. I don't believe everything first time. And I do always want to check facts on things. And I get suspicious of things that sound too good to be true. I'm back stateside for the last week. We're back into New York City a day or two. Christine still hasn't even unpacked some of her luggage, but we're only back in the city a day or two. But there was some things I read or some articles I read before I left Ireland that have kind of stuck with me for the last week or two and I haven't been able to shake them. Two weeks ago, the president of Ireland stated that the Irish need to move away from their obsession with ownership and embrace social housing. Yet he's made probably more than 1.7 million from owning property throughout his political career. He's also been living rent free in one of the biggest houses in the country in Phoenix Park since 2011. And all at the same time advising young people that they have to get away from ownership and move towards state housing. I think when the president of Ireland starts making statements that we need to embrace social housing, the rest of us need to wake the hell up. In the same week, the press reported that a social housing development of 86 apartments had been created out of an old office block in Dublin at a cost of 26 million, or as described in the article, as excellent value at 309,000 per apartment for Dublin. I asked around, the 26 million that was quoted in the article only included the refurb costs, didn't include any of the land costs or the original costs for the buildings. If you did add in all of those additional costs, you're probably talking in the region of about 600,000 per apartment. And yet these are social and affordable homes and they're reported as excellent value and excellent value for taxpayers money and a way to solve the housing crisis. How is it allowed to be reported that the cost of such a development is only 26 million when it doesn't include the cost of the original buildings or the land? How are people making statements that this is excellent value for affordable homes and good value for the state and the taxpayer? I did ask around and I was told that the building sold for about 30 million, but why isn't that reported or why isn't that included in the total cost? In my mind, this is propaganda for social housing and for the public not owning anything. The understatement or the underreporting of the true cost of providing social housing is nothing new. Two years ago, the media was full of reports that you could build social housing and it could be delivered for as little as 180,000. But these costs didn't include the cost of land, the cost of planning, the cost of taxes, or even the salaries that it would have taken to deliver such a house if it was being managed within the council. I've seen many of these projects take years, some as much as 10 years but are we adding in the true cost of those salaries within the council that took to deliver those projects over those course of over those at that long period i don't think we are and that is the true value or true cost of social housing also even if the state does own the land there is an opportunity cost for that land that has to be factored in we can't just wish away that that has to be accounted within the overall true cost of providing social housing don't get me wrong, I am in favour of social housing and the government providing more state housing. However, it's not what people really want. The vast majority of people want to own their own home and not be in social housing. And I think we have to be real about the true cost of providing social housing. And while the government is providing all this state housing over multiple different sectors, they are driving up the cost of housing for the middle class. And that is having a huge impact on the middle class and their ability to buy because they're driving up prices and they're limiting the supply. And that is one of the true costs as well that has to be factored into the state driving up or getting so involved in the housing market. And that is a real cost to the middle class because they're having to pay more and more for their homes if they wanna buy one. In my mind, it was very poor reporting to report the refurbishment of that office block into apartments as good value for money 
and only allowing for the refurbishment costs. But the question that bugs me even more is why are we underreporting or why is the media underreporting the true costs so dramatically and who is that really serving? Why make statements that these type of housings or these type of developments provide excellent value for money and excellent way to solve the housing crisis? The block in question was in Park West Dublin. There's not a lot of schools in that location. There's very poor facilities for housing because you're in the middle of a business park. So I think the PR and the propaganda around these type of reports has to be questioned. The true cost of the taxpayer needs to be made public, including the cost of the land, including the cost of the original build and all the consultancy fees that went into delivering that project. I do wonder when I read articles like this and when they're so skewed in one direction, should we be even more worried about the future of Ireland? When the president of Ireland comes out to say we should all embrace social housing, is that a hint that things are gonna get even worse? Real estate has proven to be a way to gain wealth over the long term. It's not always a safe investment, but if that opportunity to owning your own home or investing in property is disappearing for young and middle class people, we need to really start thinking about smarter ways to gain wealth over the long term and build long term wealth into the future. If we don't have access to buy our own home or the ability to invest in real estate, we really need to start thinking about how we get exposure to the real estate market. If the world elite are trying to control more and more real estate, the smart move would be to try own more real estate, not less of it. It wasn't that long ago that the average person didn't have a right to own property. People throughout history have fought very hard to gain the right to own property and land. I find it very weird that the president of Ireland, Michael D. Higgins, now in his 80s and a scholar of history is suggesting that the Irish people should give up control of ownership back to the state. Statements like this from President De Higgins and articles that I've just mentioned make me actually want to work harder to create opportunities to get exposure to the real estate investment market. And if you want to know more about this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out some of the links and newsletters below. Let me know what you think about the president advising young people to get used to state housing and the underreporting of the true cost of affordable homes. Is it something that we need to start paying attention to? Also, I'd love to hear from you in terms of your views on the idea that housing shouldn't be a commodity. It's a nice idea, it is aspirational for a society, but is it reasonable within our current system? As I said, this video has been on my mind for about a week or so to make. Some of the articles I read leading up to this made me ask more questions and hopefully this video will do the same. You'll ask more questions about articles and things you read. Hopefully you have liked this video. Please give it a share and a like. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, comment as well. And as always, thanks for watching.